Oh hi! So ever since I played Halo 2 for the first time, which was like two months ago, I've always wanted an energy sword for myself. I just went to the Learn Adafruit site because I don't know anything about microcontrollers or LEDs. I just followed all of the instructions there. So this is my experience in building the sword. Alright, so here we are in the Learn Adafruit website. There's a quick video explaining the gist of the project. So let's get started. The first thing to do is to buy everything you need. So like the complete noob I am, I only bought everything linked here that I didn't already have. So I'm going to make sure all of the electronics work before I start, just to be safe. Adafruit has a lovely circuit diagram on their website that I used to wire up the microcontroller, so I just copied that as close as I could. The battery gets connected to the controller with a slide switch, and the two LED strips share a voltage, data, and ground with a Y cable. <laughs> Alright, now that you have everything wired up, it's time to get this thing coded. So just follow all of the instructions on the Learn Adafruit site to connect your controller, upload your code, and get the circuit working. First, download and install the Arduino IDE. This is a program that organizes and uploads code to the microcontroller. Download the zip file from the Adafruit website and extract the contents. Open up the project file and install the libraries. Just go to the library manager and search for these two libraries that you'll need. Now go to the Boards Manager and install the Adafruit AVR board. It's not showing up? Well, that's probably because you weren't listening. You have to go to your preferences and paste in this link so that you can get all of the Adafruit boards. Go back to the Boards Manager and install the boards. Now that you've installed it, you can select the board. Plug in your microcontroller to your computer and make sure the right port is selected. You need a micro USB cable. This is newer than the mini USB cable, but older than the USB-C cable. What's the difference? Just the shape. There's no other reason for it to exist. Now you can upload your code. What's that? It's not working, you say? Well, that's because you weren't listening. When you open to the project file, you put it in a separate folder, and now it's looking for these files. Put these files in a folder with the project file and come back to me when you're ready. Still no luck? Well, that's because this is an electricity-only cable, silly. We're transferring data. It doesn't matter that you have 10 of these cables. None of them are data cables. You need another one because these ones won't work. Now that you have the right cable, turn on your circuit and upload your code. It should come to life. That's not working? Well, that's because you weren't listening. Everyone knows that electricity only goes one way through LEDs, and that these arrows on the circuit diagram are just for decoration. You have to wire it like this, dummy. There, now try it. Still not working? Well, maybe if you were paying attention, you would realize that the voltage in the data pins on your LED strip are switched from the ones that are hardly labeled on the circuit diagram. Put them where they should go and try again. There, you should be able to connect to it with your phone using the Bluefruit app. What do you mean it doesn't do anything? The computer says unable to find Bluefruit. Well, maybe if you listened when I said install the libraries, you also included the libraries, it would work. You're lucky that this number here matches the exact number of LEDs you have, otherwise this program wouldn't work at all. Do everything that I said and upload your code again. Now, your circuit works. It just takes some listening skills to get it done. It's not that hard. <laughs> Alright, so finally I managed to get it to work. It took a little longer than I expected, actually a lot longer. That's just because of all the mistakes I made. So always plan to do some troubleshooting. One of the things I changed in the code was where you use the color picker. It does a color wipe instead of just changing all of the lights at once. It just adds a nice little touch. Alright, so I'm going to try my best to explain how this works, but to be honest, I'm not even 100% sure myself. Basically, this 2000 mAh battery is connected to this board. There's a switch here so I can turn it on or off. The board powers these two 28 LED LED strips. Because there's two strips, the cable split up with a Y cable. The battery pin is connected to the 5 volts, the ground pin is connected to the ground, and pin 6 is connected to the data port. When our code runs, it activates a wireless signal that my phone can connect to, and I can control the pattern and color it displays. It's pretty simple if you know what you're doing, but I don't. That's okay, it just takes some figuring it out. Alright, so now that the hard part is over, let's move on to printing. The guide provides these lovely STLs that I just downloaded and sliced on my computer. I printed the handle in black PLA and I printed the blades in clear PLA, but once I print it, it's more like translucent. From this point on, it's smooth sailing. <laughs> All 
Alright, so either the bed wasn't level or maybe it was too hot. Anyways, the print came loose and completely clogged the nozzle. So the first thing you do if you have a clogged nozzle is a cold pull. That's where you stick some filament in and let it cool down and then heat it back up and as you're doing that you pull on it to hopefully get the cloggage out. So this was obviously more than a five minute fix. So what I ended up doing was taking the entire hot end apart and then eventually I just replaced the nozzle. Alright, so I finally got that sorted and I re-leveled the bed so hopefully no more prints will come loose. This project has just been a lot of troubleshooting so hopefully from here on there's no more issues. I finally got my printer up and running, the power went out. Alright, so the power went out for an hour and a half, but once it came back on, I was able to print the rest of the pieces. But of course, because the power went out, the filament hardened in the nozzle in a weird way, and anyway, when I tried to print something else... Yeah, the, the nozzle got clogged again. Okay, so now we have everything printed out nicey nicey. It took longer than it should have, but hey, that's 3D printing. You're always going to run into stuff. So now we can start gluing. There's little holes to screw the microcontroller into the handle, so those are really nice. And there's also a spot for a slide switch and access to the USB port in the handle. I'm using E6000 and hot glue to glue everything together. And to connect the blades to the handle, I'm just using some popsicle sticks that I sanded down to size. LED strips are a little wide for my print, but that's okay, I'm just gluing them in at an angle with hot glue. And in true Energy Sword Project fashion, I glued the wrong blades together. They're supposed to snap together, but somehow I overlooked that, and now I have to separate the two pieces. See this handle? You see this one? They're, they're supposed to snap together. Oh, shoot. And I think I glued the wrong one on. Just now? Yeah. So yes, I did cut the LED strip, but luckily it was in a spot where just a little bit of tape could fix it, so that was no problem. The whole blade was looking a little messy all over, with hot glue strings just everywhere, so I just used an X-Acto knife to clean it up, along with some sandpaper, and then I was ready to give it a test. But as I turned it on, the lights started to flash, and then faster, and faster, and 
faster until they went out and they wouldn't turn back on. So the battery died. Simple fix, right? This board has built-in charging. Just plug it in and wait for it to fill up. Well, after multiple attempts of messing with settings and code and which way should the switch be, I just couldn't get it to charge. So what I did is I just went online and I got another battery and a separate battery charger. It's probably a good idea to have two batteries anyway. This issue just made me do that. So after waiting for those to come in, I performed surgery on the blade handle, removing more plastic than I needed to, and eventually I got access to the battery. I just swapped them out and covered the hole with tape, and I was ready to see it in action. Originally, I was not really pleased with how this project was coming along, but as each problem slowly got solved and I finally saw it light up, I could say now I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Obviously now I know a lot more about 3D printing and microcontrollers, I don't know everything, but I know more than I started with, which is really nice. If I were to make this project again, to be honest, I couldn't think of one thing I wouldn't change. For starters, buy everything at once. Get a battery and another charger when you get everything else. Buy more than one color wire. Red is, you know, a little hard to work with when all of your wires are red. Make sure when you're soldering, the pins are in the same place on the circuit diagram as on your LED strip. Obviously, make sure you have a data USB cable. Know how to install and include libraries into code and make sure you can access the Adafruit boards with the link. Print the handle first because you want to know how much extra cable you're going to need. And for me, I printed the handle afterwards, so I had all this extra cable that I had to stuff in, which wasn't really nice. Print only with minimal supports. I snapped a piece trying to get the support off of one of them. Level the print bed with leveling squares, not just a sticky note. Print the pieces one at a time parallel to the y-axis and use a brim. The little bit of extra filament and the 30 seconds of removal time is well worth the amount of time you could be spending dealing with clogged nozzles and failed prints. Use strong glue, not just CA glue. E6000 works, but it takes forever to dry. You just have to be patient. If you glue everything properly, all the seams will look nice, but in my case, they look a little messy. That's just because I had to remove stuff and re-glue it and I was using hot glue in it. Do stuff right the first time and it won't look messy. Make sure you're gluing the right pieces together, label them, it helps, seriously. Popsicle sticks work fine for holding the blades to the handle, but cut them to size with a knife, not sandpaper. Also, I'd recommend modifying the design of the handle to have access to the battery and the board. It could save you a headache later. All of these things and maybe some things I'm forgetting are something I would definitely do if I made this again. But for now, I'm very proud of how this sword came out. And as always, remember we're BLARG. BLARG stands for Balanced Lavarock Age Rabble Gatherings. Mm -hmm.